Hi, we have already discussed the six inputs to MRP, the MPS, the bill of materials, the inventory availability or the inventory status, the lead times for each of the components, raw materials, sub-assemblies, final assembly, all of that, lot sizing, safety stock, if any. So once we have this six inputs to MRP, now we need to see how the math in the MRP system works. Let's start with this example of a bill of material. It is one of the most simple products you can really think of. So this is the product structure or the bill of materials of a speaker set. So the speaker set here is denoted by the letter A, which is made up of two major sub-assemblies B and C. B is the speaker kit and C is the speaker kit with amp booster. So now you see here for every item A that is the final product you need two B's and three C's. And each B, okay, keep that in mind, each B requires two D's and two E's. So this is called the parent. These are the two children. So you see here that there are A through G. Seven different end items, sub-assemblies and raw material and components. So when we do the math in MRP, we have to start from the top and work our way down. So the notation as we have discussed earlier is that level zero is the top level which is where the product that you are shipping followed by levels one, two, three as you go down. As we discussed two D's in one B and two B's in one A and there is a D here also the speaker. Now if you are asked the simple question if I need 100 A, how many D's do you need? The simple answer would be 2 times 2, 4 D's in this route, and 2 times 2 times 3, 12 D's in this route. So 12 plus 4, you need 16 of these D's. So for this simple example, it is pretty straightforward. I can ask you any question, it will not be complicated. But imagine if I had a product with hundreds and hundreds of raw materials and components and sub-assemblies, which is very typical in a product like a computer or a car or an aircraft. Doing this mentally is very difficult or impossible. That is when MRP plays a very important role. So now you're given that A has a lead time of 1. What does that mean? Once I have B and C ready, it will take me one week to put them together to get 1A or to get A. What does a lead time of 2 for B means? That means that it takes two weeks to put D and E together to make B. Whenever we start making D and E, it takes us two weeks to make B. Similarly, D, the item D itself takes one week, item G takes two weeks, item F takes three weeks to put together, and item E takes two weeks, which is the ordering time, the time it takes for you to place an order and receive this packing box and installation kit of wire, bolts, and screws you're not making it, you're just ordering it. Now given this scenario, let's find out how MRP works. Now keep in mind, like I said earlier, you have something called the low level coding. The low level code of A is zero, so that will be the first item that you will plan. The low level codes for B and C are both equal to one because they appear only once in level one. Level 2, you have E and F, and level 3, 
D and G. Recall that this D technically has to be here, but the reason it is put here is to show that D belongs in level 3 because this D cannot be in level 2. It has to be in level 3. So the reason this is also put in level 3 is to demonstrate that the low level code for D is 3, which means you are not going to plan for D until all the level 0, 1, and 2 items are planned. The idea behind that is, imagine D being here. If D were here, what would you do? Plan for A. Based on that, you plan B and C. That is, if you know you need 100 A's, you would know that you would need 200 B's and 300 C's. Once you know how many of B are required, you would plan for D and E. Once you know how many of C are required, you would plan E and F. However, after F, you are planning for D again based on the requirement of F. In practical scenario, that doesn't make sense because you want to plan for D at the same time. Imagining if you're ordering the speakers or even making it, assembling it yourself, there is something called ordering time, ordering cost, or setup time and setup cost if you are producing it in-house. If you are making it once, again, twice, you're incurring that setup cost twice. If you're ordering it once here, second time here again if you're ordering, you are incurring that extra ordering and transportation cost. So that is the reason you go in the sequence of levels. So in our example here, you start with A, then with B and C, then with E and F, then with D and G. So this is how a typical materials requirement plan table looks like. There are six rows to the MRP table. And if you look at this, there are MRP tables for item A, B, C. Then you have E, F, D, and G. Now you probably realize why we didn't go after A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because the low level code of D is 3. Low level code of G is 3. Low level codes for E and F are 2. And the low level codes for B and C are 1. For A it is 0. So everybody should be clear why that sequence, because it is based on the low level codes. You start with items which are at level 0, followed by 1, 2, and 3. Now, we are also given the lead time. This is the other input which we have discussed. On hand, that is the current status of inventory. Item A, we already have 10 units in inventory. Item B, we have 15 units in inventory, and so on. For our purposes, let's ignore this uh, column allocated. Safety stock, you could have some safety stock. That is the buffer inventory, just in case inventory. Safety stock is typically kept for safeguarding against uncertainties in demand or supply. Last thing before we look at the numbers, the lot size. To make it simple here, we have said it is lot for lot. So if you recall, it is the quantity that you need, you order. That is lot for lot. Let's start with this number now, 50. Where did we get this from? The MPS, the Master Production Schedule. Now we know that we need to ship 50 units of this product A in week number 8. Now we got a plan, when do we start making B and C and how much? That is the whole idea of MRP. How much to make or how much to order. Second, when to make, when to order. For every item that goes into the final product A. So now, given this, 50 units of order in week 8. And again, we are making it very simple. In reality, there may be orders all over here. 
multiple orders. But let's understand the system using one example of an order, 50 units in week 8. So as we saw earlier, we have a on-hand inventory of 10 to start with. So the gross requirements are 50 in week 8. Okay, this is what you require, just like in accounting terminology. Okay, we are at the beginning of week 1. This may be end of March, April, May that you are planning. So schedule receipts are quantities that were ordered before the end of March, sometime here. And that is the quantity that is arriving in week one, two, or whenever in our planning horizon. Okay. So in our example, we will say that we have no scheduled receipts, nothing scheduled to arrive or to be received. So we take this projected on hand of 10, carry it all the way up to week number eight. In week eight, my gross requirements are 50. My inventory is 10. So how much do I need? Net requirement is only 40. So that is the fourth row, net requirements. Now how about planned order receipts? That is the quantity that you plan to receive. If your requirement is 40, how much do you plan to receive? 40. Why? Because you're using lot for lot, which means any quantity that you need, you can get it. You can receive it. Now, if it was not lot for lot, what if this was lot size multiple 25? Then this number would be 50. Why? Because your requirement is 40, but you cannot receive 40. Why? Because you have this constraint of lot size multiple of 25. So it would be 50. So, but in our example, uh, we have lot for lot. So we can use 40 as the planned receipts and the same 40 you are going to order a week in advance. You're going to release, you're going to plan to release that order of 40 a week in advance in week 7. The simple reason is lead time is one week. Okay, now what will happen? You will start ordering this particular product or start assembling if you are doing it in-house in week 7. It will be done in week 8. How much? 40. Then you have 10 units in inventory already. 40 plus 10 is at 50, which is what you need to ship. That is my master production schedule. For you to start making 40 of this item A, if you go back to the previous slide, what do you need to make an A? Two Bs and three Cs. So you saw that you need in one A, two Bs and three Cs. But how many do you need now to make 40? When? Week number seven. So keep this in mind. The simple rule in MRP, write it down if you want. The planned order releases of the parent determines the gross requirements of the child, which simply means to make 40 of item A, you need to have 40 times 2, 80 of item B, 40 times 3, 120 of item C from the bill of materials or the product structure. And keep in mind, when do you need it? The same week as that you need to start making A. The same week that you need to start making A. 80 and 120 of B and C must be ready. Ready to go. Okay. So that is what the word this requirement here is referring to. Planned order releases refers to what you need to start making. Gross requirements refers to the units that have to be ready arrived from a supplier if it is a supplied product. If it is a produced product in-house, it should be completed, assembled, produced. So the gross requirement of the child should coincide with the planned order releases of the parent. If you understand that simple sentence, you understand MRP. So 40, you need to start of A. So 80 of B should be ready. 120 of C 
should be ready. Now we can start completing the rest of the table of B. You started with 15 of B, that is what this is. You take that all the way because there is no other order. And when you come to week number 7, 80 minus 15 is that 65 is my net requirement. Again, I can get only 65 because of lot for lot. If it was not for lot for lot, then you would have had a different number under planned order receipts. Now, once you know that 65 is the quantity that you need to receive, you need to order the release the order. You plan to release the order two weeks in advance from when it is really required. It is required in week seven, but you place the order in week five. Why? The lead time is two weeks. Similarly, you carry 20 units which were there for item C all the way up to week seven. The first time you need, you have a gross requirement. So your net requirement is 100. Planned receipts are 100, but you are ordering this only a week in advance. The reason simply, the lead time is one week. Now you have 65 units of item B, 100 units of item C. Let's go back. What do you need in a B? Two Ds, two Es. What do you need in a C? Two Es and two Fs. So keep in mind, E has two parents, B and C. You need two of E in B as well as in SC. So you need 65 of item B in week 5, 100 of item C in week 6. So how many E's? 65 times 2, 130 in week 5, 100 times 2, 200 in week 6. Let's go to E and C. 130, 200. In what weeks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So you can go back and see the planned order releases for item B is in week 5. That for item C will be in week 6. If you combine these two into one time period and say 330, you're wrong. Why? You need 130 of this item E to be ready in week number 5 because that is when item B is required. The planned order releases are in week 5, whereas for item C, it is only in week 6. Now, does E have any other parents? No. So, you can complete the MRP table of E. So, you start with this 10 units. You start with 10, take it all the way up to week 5, and in week 5, you have a net requirement of 120, planned receipts of 120, which are offset by two weeks because of the lead time of two weeks. And this 120 will arrive in week number five. Add that to the 10, 130, meet the gross requirement of 130, you end up with nothing in week number six in inventory. So you need all the 200 that you have in the requirement here as net requirement. So your planned receipts are going to be 200, again offset by two weeks. So the planned order releases for item E are going to be in week number four. So you have two planned order releases for item E. 120 in three, 200 in week four. So now let's look at a few other things. Item F is self-explanatory. Item D has two numbers here. Why is that? Let's go back. Item D has two parents, F and B. Is that correct? Let's go back and see in the bill of materials. See, item D has F and B as two parents. So what happens? You need two Ds in one B, two Ds in one F also. So let's go and find out the planned order releases of F and B. So first let's look at B. B's planned order releases are 65 in week number 5 and then that of F are 195 in week number 3. So 65 times 2 is 130 that you see here for item D because B's planned order releases were in week number 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The planned order releases for the other parent of D which is F is 
195 in week number 3. So 195 times 2 is the 390 that you have as the gross requirements of D in week 3. Now are there any more parents of D? No. So now we can complete the MRP table of D. You start with 10, take it all the way up to week number 3, use it and then your net requirement is only 380. Your planned receipts are also 380. Planned order releases are 380 a week in advance because your lead time is only one week. Use the 380 with the 10, 390, you end up with 0. And now you need all the 130 here, which is the net requirement. And then planned order releases are one week in advance because again the lead time is 1. So again item D you require to order in week 2 and again in week 4. Finally, where did we get this 195 from? G has only one parent. If you go back to the bill of materials, you will see its only parent is F. So go back to the planned order releases of F. They are 195. How many G's do you need in one F? Only one. That is why the gross requirements of G is exactly the same as the planned order releases of its parent F. But as here, for D it was multiplied by 2. The only reason is you need two D's in one F, whereas you need only one G in one F. So you get this 195, may gross requirements. Here if you recall, there is no inventory. So you need all the 195 net requirements. That is my planned order receipts and Planned order releases are 195, two weeks in advance because of the lead time of two weeks.